Today we are starting the fiber section of our evidence unit. So feel free to pause the video at any point in time um, to ensure that you get all the information that you need in your notes today. So we're going to start with a brief introduction to fiber analysis. Um, and so you may think that fibers can't be uh, useful in, an, in forensics to an, a forensic investigator. However, there have been many cases that have been solved through fiber analysis. And as we move through this portion of the unit, we're going to look at one of those cases in particular. So what exactly is a fiber? A fiber is, by definition, the smallest indivisible unit of a textile. And these uh, fibers come together to create textiles, and textiles are just a flat, flexible material made by interlacing threads together or fibers together. Now, fibers can be classified in two ways. So we can have natural fibers and we can have synthetic fibers. And you need to make sure you know the difference between the two. So natural fibers are going to be derived from animals, plants, and minerals. So this would include uh, things like wool or cotton or angora or even silk. Synthetic fibers are man-made fibers. They're made in a laboratory, and they are made by taking monomers and joining them together in a chemical process to form polymers. Uh, synthetic fibers include things like rayon, polyester, nylon, acetate. You may be familiar with some of those. All right, so we're going to start going through, um, and we're going to talk about natural fibers and synthetic fibers individually, and we're going to talk about some characteristics of each of those. So starting with our natural fibers, one example of a natural fiber is going to be like a plant fiber. So plant fibers, uh, some characteristics, they tend to absorb water. They are insoluble in water, which means when they're placed in water, they, they don't dissolve. Uh, plant fibers are very resistant to damage from harsh chemicals. They can only be dissolved by strong acids, uh, and they can be commonly found at crime scenes because they do become brittle over time and they break off. Uh, and so when investigators work crime scenes, they often find these plant fibers as trace evidence. So you'll need to be familiar with some examples of plant fibers. And so here in your notes, I've put cotton, core, and hemp, um, but there are tons more. Now your animal fibers are also considered to be natural fibers. Animal fibers are made of proteins like keratin. They also tend to shed it very easily, so that makes them great for uh, forensic evidence um, to, to be uh, found at crime scenes um, as trace evidence. Some examples of animal fibers would include uh, like wool, which comes from a sheep, cashmere, which comes from goats, um, angora from rabbits, or silk from caterpillar cocoons. We also have mineral fibers, which are a type of natural fiber. Uh, and so some examples of mineral fibers include fiberglass, which is a fibrous form of glass. Um, is tend to be used in construction. Um, sometimes ceilings are made of fiberglass, uh, ducts, roofing materials can be made of fiberglass, even in insulation can be made of fiberglass. You also have something like asbestos, which is a mineral fiber. It's a natural occurring mineral. Uh, it has a crystalline structure. And it's used in a lot of building materials too. Sometimes vehicles uh, are made of materials that are made of asbestos. Um, a lot of manufactured goods. Our, our synthetic fibers, there are a ton of synthetic fibers, but these are some that I want you to be familiar with. So polyester is a synthetic fiber. It's found in a lot of fleece materials. It's great for garments because it's wrinkle resistant. It's not easily broken down by light or acids. Um, and a lot of times it's added to natural fibers to provide strength. So a lot of times fibers will actually be blended. So you might have a synthetic fiber and a natural fiber. Nylon's another example of synthetic fibers that you may be familiar with. Nylon's easily broken down by light and concentrated acid. Uh, otherwise, it's very similar in structure to polyester. Acrylic is inexpensive. It tends to ball very easily, and it's used um, as sort of a dupe for wools and furs. 
Acetate has a luxurious appearance, so it tends to be used as a dupe for some of your more expensive garments like silk. Uh, it tends to dry easily, so acetate is found in a lot of your dry wicking materials that athletes wear. Um, and rayon, our last one is rayon, it's a semi-synthetic, uh, it has a high luster and a bright sheen. Now long fibers can be woven directly into what we call textiles. So textiles again are fibers that are woven together. Um, and shorter fibers might have to be spun into yarns before the yarns can be then woven into textiles. Either way, this weaving consists of arranging lengthwise threads and these are known as warps. So in a, in a textile, the lengthwise threads, we call those the warps. Uh, and they just are placed side by side and close together. And then crosswide threads, which are called the wefts, are pushed back and forth in a specific pattern. And these patterns can vary. We're going to look at some different uh, weave patterns on the next slide, um, but I do want to point out that um, if I show you a picture like you see on the screen and I ask you to label the warp and the weft, just make sure that you can do that. So our warp threads are going to run vertically and the weft threads run horizontally. So, as mentioned before, textiles do come in a range of weave patterns. There are a lot of different weave patterns, but for this class, I want you to be familiar with four. So, you can see here on the screen, um, for this class, we need to know, we need to be able to identify plain weave, basket weave, satin, and twill. Um, so, again, the pattern in which the weft passes over and under the warp fibers is known as the weave pattern. Um, and what I want you to do is, uh, if you need to, pause the video because in your notes I want you to list the, the four types of weave patterns. Make sure that you can uh, identify these weave patterns. So if I give you one of these pictures on a test or a quiz or a worksheet, you can identify them by the image and also by the description. All right, so in forensics, we can use a quantitative measure like thread count, which, which is a measure of the number of threads that are woven into one square inch of fabric. So this quantitative measure just sort of gives us a, a starting point in fiber analysis. So essentially, thread count is just a measure of how tightly uh, woven a fabric is, and it's calculated by adding together the number of warps, which are the lengthwise threads, uh, and the weft threads within a certain area. So the number of threads in a fabric can be used as forensic evidence. Now you can see here in this image, um, we have listed the vertical thread count as seven. So when I ask you what's the vertical thread count of this fabric or this image, um, you'll just count the number of vertical threads, that's the threads that run up and down. So you can see here that would be seven. Now for horizontal thread count, that's going to be the threads that run side to side horizontally. Um, and here you see that there are seven of those threads as well. Uh, the question that I often get asked by students is, are these numbers always the same? And the answer is no, sometimes they are different. All right, I'd like for you to pause the video here and see if you can count the horizontal thread count and the vertical thread count, see what you get. All right, if you guessed six for the vertical thread count and six for the horizontal thread count, you are correct. So there are six threads running up and down vertically, and there are six threads also running horizontally. All right, this one looks a little different, so pause the video and give this one a shot. All right, you should have counted 10 threads for the vertical thread count and 10 for the horizontal thread count. Um, now this one it was a little different because you had two threads side by side. Um, so two, four, six, eight, ten 10 um, running vertically and then we also had 10 total threads running side to side. Now if you're in class today we're going to do a little activity but otherwise um, we are done for this lesson and I will see you in the next lesson.